club, there's gonna be some painting and drawing Art club, there's gonna be some painting and drawing Some of the time we might do drawing and painting But most of the time we will do painting and drawing Grab a pencil, grab a brush, we're about to do Art club! Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Art Club. It's half best of, half game show, half art club and half maths lesson. Before we go any further, in case you're wondering, I asked the wardrobe department for a cheesy bow tie. Right, to tell you what's going on, I asked all of you lot to vote for your favourite bits of Art Club on my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook and here on this YouTube video and you all commented with your favourite songs and your favourite artists and your favourite jokes and your favourite two-part drawings and your favourite characters, all sorts of stuff and I've got them all in here on my iPad and what I'm going to do is put up a little short list of four, four and I'm going to get you guys to guess which one you think has won. So, first up, we have got the favourite character. Is it the bouncing bum? The small comedian inside my head telling jokes? The sausage bird? Or my little bearded helper, Felicia Falafel? Hello everyone! Now, you should have all of the options here. You have got 10 bounces of the bouncing bum to guess which one you think was voted the most popular character. Here we go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Right, have you made up your mind? We're gonna be playing, not for points, we're gonna be playing obviously for sausages, not real sausages. And I'm gonna give you the three, two, one. In third place, we had the sausage bird. If you said sausage bird, you get one sausage. In second place, it was the small comedian inside my head. If you said the small comedian inside my head, you get two sausages. And the winner of the best character, and if you said this, you get three sausages, was obviously the bouncing bum. There you go. So that's what's happening. See how many sausages you can win and enjoy the best bits of Art Club Series 1. I think we're going to go straight in with the most popular two-part drawing. Was it the Spunicorn? Was it the T-Rex in a V-neck? Was it the Disgruntled Donut? Or was it the Robot Cityscape? Time to make up your mind. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5... Four, three, two, one. And if you said the disgruntled donut, you get one sausage. If you said the T-Rex in a V-neck, you get two sausages. But the winner of the most popular two-part drawing, and if you said it, you get three sausages, and we're going to play it next, was the Spunicorn. Congratulations if you said it, and let's enjoy that one more time. Grab a pencil, grab a brush, we're about to do Art Club! As usual, we're starting off with the two-part drawing. Now, one of the things that I've been asked most to do in the two-part drawing is a unicorn. I am illustrating a children's book at the minute. It's not going to be out till next year. And it's got loads of monsters in. And I have done like a cross between a monster and a unicorn. So I thought we could draw that and it'll be really fun. All you'll need is a sheet of paper. I've got a sheet of A4 paper here. And you'll need something to draw with. And I'm going to use my pen again. And we'll get going. So the first thing we are going to do is a curved line that starts around about there on your page and it just curves up like this. And this is going to be the snout of the unicorn or the mouth. And then we're going to draw a, another curved line like this. And this unicorn is going to have his mouth open and we'll curve the mouth around and then we'll do the bottom part of the mouth. We'll curve down like to around about there and then it will come back to about there and because this is a monster unicorn we're going to give it some teeth one two three and then a few more on the bottom 
Now we'll do a little circle there and a curved line for the snout. It's kind of almost looks like a crocodile unicorn. We'll do an eye, nice round eye here. And then inside that we'll do the pupil. And we're gonna do the mane, the hair. So we'll start here, because we're gonna leave an ear, space for an ear there. And we'll do a bit of a mane there. Let's do like a little bit like that. And then we'll do the ear. So the ear is this kind of shape. And then do a little line inside. Of course, the unicorn needs a horn. So we'll do a little horn just sticking through the mane. It goes up like so. Round curved line there, and then we'll continue the main around the back. Actually, let's go back to our jaw and we'll start to do a little bit of a neck to curve it around, and we'll do the other side of the neck, and we'll finish the body in the second part. And we'll curve this bit round here, this is going to be the head, and we'll join that to the neck. And then we'll do the back of the mane. Do it flicking up at the back like this. And we'll do that ear at the back. So I'm just sticking out a little bit here. Oh, and we'll give him an eyebrow. Because he's a happy unicorn, this one. Despite him looking a bit scary, he is a happy unicorn. I'm gonna use my other pen just to do a little bit of fine detail on the horn here, so just some little lines like this. And I might just put a few little bits of texture in the unicorn's mane. And I think that's about it for now. So join me at the end of the show and we will do the body and I'll show you exactly why this unicorn is so happy and I'll show you what happens when he is happy and I think you're gonna like it. Finishing off the Spoonicorn at the end of this show, but before we get on to the next bit, I think we need a joke, don't we? Now, what has been my favourite joke of the series? I'm going to give you four options. Here they are. Was it, what did Batman say to Robin before they got into the car? Was it, what's brown and knocks on your bedroom window at night? Was it, what did the pirate say on his 80th birthday? Or was it, what's red and invisible. You've got 10 bounces to make up your mind. And nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Right, if you'd have said, what's red and invisible, you'd get one sausage. If you'd have said, what's brown and knocks on your bedroom window, that's two sausages. However, my favorite joke, of the entire art club has to be this one. And if you said it, you get three sausages. What did Batman say to Robin before they got in the car? Get in the car! <laughs> and that joke has come from Erin, age eight. Right, it's time to try and guess what the most popular other activity was from Art Club Series 1. We have got a short list of four, and they are speech bubbles, 3D shapes, comic strips, or eyebrows. So you've got 10 bounces. And nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Right, have you chosen? Because here it comes in third place. And if you said this, you get one sausage. It is speech bubbles. If you said this, you get two sausages, eyebrows. And in first place, with three sausages, it's comic strips, take it away. 
Welcome back. Right, what we're gonna do now is something that I used to love doing as a child. I used to love making my own comic strips. If I visited your school, I know quite a few of the people who watch this, I've been to your schools. If I have been to your school, then you'll know that when I was a kid, I used to make my own comics and sell them in the school playground and then spend all of the money on sweets. What we're gonna be doing though today is showing you how to make a three or four panel comic strip. All you need is a sheet of A4 paper and a pen. That is literally all you need. You can colour it in later, I might be adding a bit of colour to mine. And it's quite simple, let's go. What you do, you take your sheet of paper and you fold it in half so it's long and thin like that. And that's the perfect dimensions for a comic strip. And you could do one here and you can turn it over and do another one there. And if you mess it up and you want to go again, you can do one there and do one there. So it's, it's really good. We are going to start by doing the title. If you make a little line that's like halfway along and you do it all the way along here. You can use a ruler for this, but I like to try and do it as freehand. It kind of gives it a homemade style. And that's where we're gonna put the title of our comics. Have I got a slightly thicker pen? I might use one of these just for the title, just so the title looks stands out a bit more because my title of my comic is called Worms. Worms, and then you put by and your name. So by Olaf Falafel, that's mine, that's not yours. Yours is your name. So by Olaf. Have I left enough room? I hope so. Just about. There we go. Now we need to add the panels. They're the squares that your comics go in. This one is gonna be a four panel, let me hold up four fingers, a four panel cartoon, but you can do three panel, you can do two panel, you could even do one if you've got a really funny thing that can just go in one frame. This is gonna be four panels, and it's gonna be all about two worms talking together. It's quite simple. Uh, we're gonna do one panel here. Get my hand out of the way, so it's not blocking them. And another panel here, just up to the edge of where the title goes. And then we'll do this panel quite big. And then we'll do the end frame the last panel here. It doesn't matter if it's not 100% neat because that just makes it look more hand-drawn. Now there are no rules to comics, but one thing that a lot of people tend to like to do is put the funniest bit at the end. That's how I do it. I put the funniest bit at the end and then I try and work out how we get to that funny bit. Now this one's all about two worms, so I'm gonna draw those first. There's one worm here, really simple to draw worms. And this worm here, he is going to have cat food on his head. It's gonna look a bit like, there we go. And just give him some eyes. This one's talking, so his mouth is going to be open. And this one's going to be listening, so he's just going to be smiling. And he's going to be saying, this one here is going to be saying, why have you covered your head in cat food? Now, I'm not going to do speech bubbles around these. I'm just going to do a little line that points to the person who's talking. You'll see what I mean. Here you go. Why have you covered yourself in cat food? And in the next frame, the one with the cat food on his head, he's gonna be talking. And to vary it up a bit, I'm gonna make him a little bit bigger in the frame. So it focuses on him a bit more. So it's gonna be like this. Draw the cat food. He's going to be saying, so the birds won't eat me. 
Now in the third frame, we're gonna go back to having two of them and it's gonna be a bit of a reaction shot. So a little gap, a little pause before the joke at the end. And the one of them who asked the question, he's gonna be confused and there's gonna be a little question mark over his head and the other one's gonna be smiling. Oh, and we can put some little birds in the distance. And then in the final frame, I've drawn him being eaten by a cat and he's saying a partial success. So he didn't get eaten by birds, but he did get eaten by a cat. Now what you can do is color that in. So I'm gonna color my worms in pink like this. I'm not gonna add much color at all. I'm just gonna color in my worms and I'm gonna color in the cat food. And there you have it, a simple four frame cartoon strip. Why have you covered yourself in cat food? So the birds won't eat me. A partial success. Meow. Now, yours doesn't have to be about worms. It can be about whatever you like and you can make them do whatever they like. I'll show you a few more of mine. I've got some here about snakes, unicorns and really stupid aliens. I'd love to see your really silly cartoons. Please do send them in to me. Silly Snakes by Olaf Falafel. Did you know that all good comic strips have something funny in the last panel? What do you mean? I swallowed a teapot. Unicorn Friends by Derek Chickpeas. Did you know if a unicorn gets scared, it vomits a rainbow? I don't believe you. Look out, there's a giant spider behind you. Blah. Not Very Clever Aliens by Olaf Falafel. How many pencils must I eat before I am art? No, to be art, you do not eat pencils. You smell them. Ah, pencils. pencils. We, we are, are art! art! What did the pirate say on his 80th birthday? I'm 80. <laughs> and that joke has come from Zipic. I'm not sure that is a real name at all. Now, one thing we had a lot of in Art Club Series 1 were stupid songs, and I get so many people saying how much they like them, but what was the most popular stupid song? Here's the shortlist. Was it A, T-Rex in a V-neck, B, Bridget Riley's Disco Pants, C, Anything Can Be Sculpture, or D, Salvador Dali's Barmy Army? I'll play you a quick snippet from each one, and then we'll have 10 bounces of the bouncing bum to guess which one we think is the most popular. Here you go. T-Rex in a V-neck, I know, I know, you're really fashionable. Bridget Miley's disco pants. They really make me wanna dance. Those wavy lines have me entranced A cat with a solitary flower Anything can be sculpture A unicorn stacked on the back of a cat Anything can be sculpture A miniature loo on a drug shop poo Anything can be sculpture 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 right in third place anything can be sculpture if you said that add one sausage to your tally 
I hope you're keeping a track of all of these sausages. If you said Bridget Riley's disco pants, you get two sausages. I'm the winner. And if you said this, you get three. It is our old favorite T-Rex in a V-neck. And I'm gonna play it for you now. T-Rex in a V-neck, I know. T-Rex in a V-neck, I know, I know you laid a glitter ball There were times when I thought it was a poo But it turned into a smaller version of you Now, Art Club was a lot of fun, but unfortunately we did learn some stuff. And every time we did, that sound played. However, I quite enjoyed learning a bit about the different artists, but which was the most popular artist? Was it Bridget Riley, Jackson Pollock, Henri Matisse, or Pablo Picasso? It's time to choose. Ten, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Have you made your mind up yet? Here we go. In third place, and if you guess this one, you get one sausage. It was Henri Matisse. In second place, if you guess this, you get two sausages. Ooh, Bridget Riley and her disco pants. But the winner in first place, and if you guess this, you get three sausages to your total. It was Jackson Pollock, and we're gonna do that again, because it was a lot of fun. Now, actually, before I do that, I remember after I put this episode out, I got sent a brilliant video from one parent, and it showed their kid doing the Jackson Pollock in a shoebox thing, and it was brilliant. It was just so energetic. It was almost like a cross between PE and art. It was brilliant, I loved it. So here's that video, and then we're gonna do the Jackson Pollock the shoebox pump. Right, now it's time for our one minute artist bit. This week we're learning about the artist Jackson Pollock. One minute artist, Jackson Pollock. Jackson Pollock was an abstract expressionist artist born in Wyoming, USA in 1912. His style of painting was often called action painting because he would drip, throw and splash lots of different colours of paint across really large canvases in very quick movements. This painting is called Number 5, 1948 and at one time it was the world's most expensive painting. Jackson is actually Pollock's middle name. His real name is Paul Pollock. Jackson Pollock used to work by laying huge canvases on the floor of his studios and dripping different coloured paints all over them. You'll quite often see footprints in his paintings where he has accidentally walked onto his canvas. Pollock would quite often listen to music whilst he was creating art. This is a close-up from a painting called Summertime. Five, and that four, is Jackson Pollock three, in a minute. Two, one. There you go. That was quite educational, wasn't it? Now we're going to be recreating a Jackson Pollock painting. Now his paintings were quite messy and this might be quite messy. I've tried to minimise the mess as much as possible, mums and dads, but you know, still need to be careful. Uh, and you might want to wear some kind of apron. I really want to protect my stripes, so I'm going to be putting this one on. This is like the opposite of stripes. I've got some dots. It's got some nice frills on it as well. This is like wearing your rival football team's football shirt. But I wouldn't want to get the stripes messy and I don't really care about spots. They can get as messy as they like. So I'll just tie that up at the back. How does it look? And what you'll need for this is a shoe box. If you've got a shoe box, great. If you've got any other kind of box, that will still work. I've got a shoe box here. It's quite big. I've got size 12 feet, so I have quite big shoe boxes. 
And I don't want you to kind of see what the brand is. So what I've done is I've crossed out one of the stripes and I've written Adi Duda there, just so you won't know what the brand is. And I'm gonna use my Adi Duda box and I'm gonna open it up and you'll see that I've already got a sheet of paper in there. Let me move these sheets of paper to the side. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna make our own Jackson Pollock style painting using a box with a sheet of paper in and some paint. So once you've got your sheet of paper in your box like this, you can kind of set it to one side for a bit and then get your paint. I've got a little tray thing. So I'm sure that's got a proper name. And I've also got some weird little objects that I've collected. I've got some little teddy bear things here. I've got a dice, I've got a golf ball, and I've got a little miniature Hagrid from the popular movies, Harry Potter. I think they made some books as well or something, I'm not sure. What we're gonna do is get our first paint and I'm gonna use this blue here and I'm gonna squeeze a bit of blue. Oh, there we go, it's already a bit messy. And I might water that down a bit. So hopefully I'll be able to get a little bit of this water in there. This is gonna be tricky. Ah, oh, there you go. Already getting a bit messy, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm gonna use the golf ball for this one and I'm gonna pop the golf ball in there and I'm gonna I'm gonna get a paintbrush as well, I think, and just paint the golf ball with some of this blue paint. Might need to kind of mix it up a bit, get it nice and nice and runny, cover it all. I mean, you are gonna get messy doing this, let's face it. And once you've got your object nice and covered in your paint of choice, all you need to do is put it in the box close the lid, or if you haven't got a lid, just be careful, and roll it around so it hopefully will make a kind of a Jackson Pollock style painting. Fingers crossed this works. Move that to one side, move my water, get my Addy Doodah box. Haven't got a clue what this will look like, so Let's hope it's good. I think I'm going to open it up and see. Let me take the golf ball out first and then very gently I mean, that looks pretty cool, right? What I'm gonna do is let that dry, put my box to one side, and then I'm gonna do it again using a different colored paint and perhaps using one of the other objects. I wanna give Hagrid a try, so we'll do him next. Right, I'm gonna clean off my brush a bit and I'm gonna use some red, although it doesn't look that, it looks a bit more pink than red. It's called Permanent Rose. I'm gonna scoop some out. Come on, out you come. Permanent Rose. Ooh. Ooh. Looks a bit. Sorry, Hagrid, it's time to be permanent rosed. So Hagrid looks quite covered there. I'm gonna put that lid back on there. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> I'm gonna put my painting, I need the Addy Doodah, I need four arms. I need the Addy Doodah box back. I need to put my paper back in there. Try and get it straight again. I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope Hagrid works some magic.
<laughs> there we go, out you come mate. You can sit next to that golf ball. You might want to give your fingers a quick clean at this point. There we go. Need another hand. Pop that over there. Pop that down there. Put that back on the floor. I think I might quickly go and wash my hand. Be back in a second. Right, that's my hands a bit cleaner. We're gonna do some yellow now. So I get my yellow, give it a shake. Hopefully this won't be as lumpy. And what I'm gonna use for this one, I could use either the teddy, I want something round actually. So what I might do, you might remember I made the queen out of plasticine for our sculpture edition. What I'm gonna do is rip the queen's face off. There we go. And I'm gonna turn that into a little round plasticine ball. And I'm gonna dip that plasticine ball in my yellow paint and hopefully this will work quite well. So I'm gonna get the Addy Doodah box back. I'm gonna put my sheet back in here and get my little blob of plasticine covered in yellowy paint. I'm gonna chuck it in, close that lid. It doesn't feel like it's rolling as well. Dip again. I might have a quick sneak peek. Not bad, not bad at all, actually. Oh, out you come. It's the Queen's face. And if I peel this out. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? It's my very own shoebox Pollock. Try saying that quickly. Don't. Wonderful. It would be great to see all of your shoebox Pollocks. <laughs> it would be great to see all of your shoebox Pollocks. Send them in and use the hashtag OlafArt. We're gonna do another other activity, if you know what I mean. So I've got four more other activities and I'm gonna get you to vote on which one you think was the most popular. We have got Name Monsters, the Breaking the Rules color poster, Silly Splats, and the Non-Social Distancing Slime. You've got 10 bounces to make up your mind. Man, nine. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Have you chosen one yet? Right, here we go. In third place, draw roll. If you said this, you get one sausage. It was the non-social distancing slime. In second place, if you said this, you get two sausages. It was silly splats. I quite liked those, they were funny. But in first place, the most popular other, other activity that we did was the Breaking the Rules colour poster. I liked that one, that was good. Actually, you get to see Felicia Falafel attempt to say all of the names and stuff, it was quite funny. And if you said that, you get three sausages. Take it away. What's brown and knocks on your bedroom window? A poo on stilts. <laughs> Well, that was quite fun, I suppose. What we're gonna do now is a Breaking the Rules color challenge poster. What you'll need for this is a sheet of A4 paper and then some things to color with. I've got pencils, I've got felt tips, whatever you wanna use, you can mix them up. All you need to do is really simple, is get a color. So for example, I've got red here and we're gonna write the word of a color. But all you have to make sure is that the word of the color you write doesn't match the color that you use, if you get what I mean. You'll see what I mean. So for example, I've got red, 
but I'm gonna write the word yellow. Now what I'm gonna do is choose another color. So, I've got this blue here, and I'm gonna do another word. I'm gonna write purple, ooh, no, not purple. I'm gonna write green, and I'm gonna go down the page this time, I think. Again, get another color. So I'm gonna use yellow now, and I'm gonna write red. And the idea is to fill up your whole page with words of colors in all sorts of different colors, but make sure those colors aren't the same as the words, if you know what I mean. I'm gonna put this into fast forward. And there you go, a really colorful breaking the rules picture. A really good thing to do with this one is to challenge somebody to say the colors without saying the actual words. It is a lot more difficult than you think. So what you need to do, okay, is point at the different words and you need to say the color and not the word, okay? okay. Here we go. Yellow, blue, Black, pink, orange, yeah. oh. <laughs> Go on, keep going. Red, blue, oh, yellow, pink. No! Oh. <laughs> it's green. <laughs> keep going, keep going. Green, blue, orange. That was, that was blue. <laughs> you said green. Blue. Blue, orange, purple. <laughs> grab a pencil, grab a brush, we're about to do Art Club! Right, it's time for the second part of our spunicorn. We're going to run that now. So you remember at the beginning of the show, we started drawing our monster unicorn. We're gonna carry on with that now. So get your pictures back and get the pens that you were using. I think I was using that one and that one. And we're gonna go for it. So the first thing we're gonna do, he didn't have a body, so we'll get that sorted out straight away. Uh, we'll carry on from this neckline and we'll curve it around and make a little tummy like this. And then this arm that is gonna come down from here. So Kerry's neck is gonna turn into an arm. And I'm gonna put a hand at the bottom. So one, curve, two, three. And just extend that up a little bit. And draw a thumb there. And then draw the arm up like that. And give him a little belly button there. His other arm is gonna be giving the thumbs up. So I'm gonna curve a line there and let's do the thumb. So that's the thumb. And then it's gonna be kind of three sausage shapes to make his fingers. That's giving the thumbs up. And then we'll do the other arm like that. Now I'm gonna give him two legs, quite thin legs. So one there and the other one a little bit smaller behind there. And on the bottom of his legs, I'm just gonna give him some little kind of hoof shape feet. I have to draw a little line there to make them look like hoofs. And we'll give him a flowing tail as well. Let's give him a flowing tail. And I might grab my thinner pen and just put a few more texture lines in that tail. Now this is a very happy monster unicorn and this monster unicorn's name is Spunicorn and when he is happy, he spews a rainbow. So we're gonna draw him vomiting a rainbow, which I think is quite fun. 
So he's very happy and he's spewing out a rainbow. So we are gonna draw a line that kind of goes like that. And then another line that goes like that. And then at the end of this, we're gonna draw some like sploshy kind of lines like this. And I'm gonna use my smaller pen to draw some little kind of droplet shapes like this. Now he's really happy, uh, but we don't know what he's happy about. And he can't tell us because obviously he's spewing a rainbow. So we're gonna draw a thought bubble and he's gonna be thinking what he's happy about. Do you remember from earlier we did the thought bubbles? So you can even draw them as like clouds or just as a circle. I'm gonna draw mine as a circle, but first of all, you've got to write your words and then do the thought bubble around it. There you go, my monster unicorn is thinking, I'm so happy because the football is starting up again soon. Very similar to me, actually. Now all we need to do is color in our unicorn. You can color yours in any color you like, and you can have your unicorn thinking whatever you want them to think. Uh, I'm gonna get on and do that now. And there you have it, my finished spewnicorn, looking very happy because the football is starting again. Please share yours with me. I'd love to see what all of your spewnicorns are happy about. And one of you could win my spewnicorn. All you need to do is go to the comments in this video. Make sure you click subscribe, go to the comments in this video and type the very special code phrase, my unicorn is happy and it has spewed a rainbow. Good luck. And I would love to see all of yours and make sure you use the hashtag Olaf Art. Well, I'm afraid that is it for this very special best of Art Club Series 1 episode. Uh, we'll have one last vote and that will be for the outro. That's like the bit at the end when I say bye. I always try and do something stupid. Uh, and the options for this one are... Me having flowers thrown at me, me having sausages thrown at me, the time delay whoopee cushion, or the small comedian inside my head telling a joke. Vote now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Right, here comes the results. In third place, and if you said this, you get one sausage. It's the small comedian inside my head telling a joke. If you said having flowers thrown at me, you get two sausages. But the winner, obviously, is me throwing some sausages. So if you said that, you get three sausages. What I need you to do is add up all of the sausages that you've won. I told you it's a bit like a maths lesson, this one. And then tell me in the comments below how many you got right. And the winner will be really proud of themselves and can go and have a sausage. Please keep hitting subscribe if you haven't and please keep sharing your drawings with me and use the hashtag OlafMart. Run my favorite outro. Now, do you remember last week, there was someone called Rosie who wrote in and said that they thought it would be funny that if instead of flowers thrown at me, it was sausages. Yeah, that was really funny. So today, Rosie, I hope you're watching because you're getting those sausages back. So, bye. Thank <laughs> you.